Peach Festival is coming up, folks, and we have uh, someone from that Peach Festival going to talk to us today. We're also going to talk about a wonderful art show that's going to happen at the Beatnik organization. It's called the Beatnik Studios. Why don't I remember that? Beatnik Studios. <laughs> and then there's a cabaret going to happen at California Stage. So get a pencil because these are wonderful events that you or your family could attend today uh, or this weekend. So stay tuned for Live Wire right after this important message. Right there. That one. in beautiful Sacramento, but they're everywhere. There are 10 or 11 of them. And they are run by an organization called the Living Smart Foundation. The Living Smart Foundation, I like that idea when it comes to eating good food and staying on the planet, being strong. And with me in the studio is Don and Don Hall. Yes. Don, you are the CFO of that organization. That I am. So, and you brought these peaches here because you want to talk about the Peach Festival, which is happening at the Carmichael um, Park. Par park, but that mm -hmm. it's also the Carmichael Farmers. Food Fair. Or it's the Carmichael Farmers Market. Farmers Market, right? Yes. And um, these are some of the peaches that are brought in yeah. from various places. Yes, uh, we have farmers that basically farm up and down the valley. Uh, mm -hmm. all the way from the coast all the way up into the foothills. And because of all the microclimates that we have, yep. we've got dozens and dozens of farmers. And lovely stuff too, I must say. I had some peaches this morning. I just love that wonderful at, um, s smell of the peach. And the it's the perfect time for peaches. Peaches are at their absolute prime right now. Yeah. They're crisp, they're ripe, they're sweet. It's a wonderful time to mm -hmm. get some peaches. Mm -hmm. well, I'm good with that. Uh, and so this festival is going to be a kind of like a show and tell of it's a lot of fun. It's it really, it's designed to be a family festival. It's like an old time uh, festival you go to when you were young. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we have games for the kids. It's free entry. Uh, we've got all kinds of things that are peach related, pre mm -hmm. peach products. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, there's a little cheat sheet here. Yeah. Peach inspired food and products, a dessert contest. Oh, yeah. If, you are, if you're interested, make it, bring it on down. You can enter for free. And if you, if you win, then you win uh, money and prizes. Right. It says uh, free family fun with great games and prizes. Yeah. <laughs> we have the fun games for like kids, you know, and uh -huh. young adults. So. And they have a silent raffle for gifts. Yeah. So if you have like a party coming up, you want to give a birthday gift or something like that. Yeah, come on down. And you, if you play a game, you win the stuff, you get the tickets, you can put it into the silent raffle if you win you win a that's fantastic and there's also uh, artisans there and vendors and I suspect there's something like music yes we have a couple of different musicians uh, throughout the day so it's music all day long uh, we have over a hundred different vendors out there so you can get all kinds of artisan products out there uh, the idea is everybody there makes what they sell whether it's the farmer who grows it or whether it's the artisan who makes it you know, uh, we, uh, we don't have too much time to talk, but I really want to get in this point that, that we started with earlier in the conversation before we came on the air, mm -hmm. which was um, the Living Smart Foundation and it, what it does and how youth get, um, you know, people like me who grew up in the city, you know, we know about farmer's markets and our mother would go there and she'd walk around and buy stuff with my pa, but, you know, we didn't learn too much about food unless you know they learn something right well uh, we're a nonprofit and what we our mission is is we are educating youth mm -hmm. and we educate them with life skills work skills and the way we do that is free classes to the youth which mm -hmm. then they can then get a job and come out and work at the farmers market so all the 11 different markets we have have youth working at them getting paid and they continue to get educated as they go so when you come out to the peach festival you're gonna see a bunch of kids running around in peach shirts all those kids are in the program all those kids are getting paid to be there all those kids are learning skills and life skills out in the process of everybody having fun and learning about food you yes. know I uh, the schools around here and uh, because we have we have two or three guests throughout the year every week um, I've talked with people who teach kids how in schools how to cook 
Yeah. You know, nobody taught me how to cook. I actually couldn't go into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, <laughs> I might break something or burn something right. or something like that. But these kids know what to do and they can help in the family uh, and their own families later mm -hmm. cook uh, delicious things. Absolutely. Well, you know, learning about where the food comes from is, mm -hmm. uh, is an important part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, all too often these days people think comes out from under cellophane and, uh, you know, it's got a whole life cycle before then. So, uh, you know, our mission is to educate these kids not just in you know li work skills and how to mm -hmm. be on time and how to do conflict resolution those kinds of things but also to really become involved with the food itself and where it comes from and how to use it yeah we're lucky here in sacramento because you can drive uh for 10 or 15 minutes in any direction and run into some right. farm of something it's wonderful yeah it is great and these are from california you said these were picked awesome. a couple of days ago yes Mm. They picked Dave for yesterday. So, mm. yeah, uh, the festival is going to be on August 13th. Okay. It, we go from 9 to 3, it's Carmichael Park. Free? It's, it's free. It's on the grass, under the trees. It's gorgeous. It's a wonderful time. You know, it's made for the family, made for fun. I can't argue with that. That's good. <laughs> Are you sure it's fun? I'm absolutely positive of fun. You can bring your kids out and get it. We have a peach eating contest where we put sliced peaches oh, with whipped great. cream. Here it is. A lot of fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do we have some slides? I thought we had some slides that we were going to look at of, oh, a, of past events. It's a great way this to get it. This is the third it. annual. Or yes, fourth, it is. Third annual. Okay. And you can get some great pictures of your kids with, you know, whipped cream all over their faces. Oh, great. Narrate this one. Here, you're, yeah. you're the man. Go There's the pie eating. Uh, that's the pie judging contest. So there's some of the ladies that made pies and... Uh, you know, we get, and I, I only had one year where I got to judge them. This is the pie eating contest, so you can see where they're all smiling. Oh, up, yeah, I can see the contest. And they're getting ready to have a good time planting their faces. No hands, so they got to plant their faces in there. It's kind of like uh, you did oh, when you were kids. That's, yeah, well, that teaches them skills on how to eat pies. Oh, yeah, <laughs> there they are. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, it's, everybody's hooting and holler. It's a good time, had by all. Free to get it, you know, come in and do it. Ooh, what's that? Oh, there's more pie judging. So, you know, you get to make whatever you want. It's just whatever. It's a pie dessert contest. So however you want to make it, whether it's a full-on pie or do it as a tart or Ooh, however you want to do it. And what's in the one on the left? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. The last Great. year, a lady made a pie from her grandmother's recipe. The first time she ever made a peach pie, and she wow. won. That is really fantastic. Yeah, see, it's, these are some of the... The gifts that are out there, uh -huh. the, the raffle gifts. So we make them really fun, really interesting, and a lot of fun games, and it's a lot of fun. Is this stuff. at Carmichael as well? Uh, this one, yeah, this is at Carmichael. Yeah, okay. I can tell yeah. by the trees. Yeah, well, I see. <laughs> okay, and there's some kind of demonstration yep. going on. We here. have a chef demo. So we have a chef demo where we have a professional chef comes out, and she will be telling, teaching you how to do uh, different things using peaches and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. I like it. I like it. And whoop. Oh. Yep, we do signs because, you know, there's lots of stuff going on. Got to tell people where to go, where the That's games right. are, where all the fun is. Okay, Be Money Smart USA uh, forward slash Peach Festival. Yep. Or there was another one here, which yeah. is easier. It's which easier. Which says, uh, I love my I love my farmers market. Market. com. That'll get you Even there. Even better. Even better. Okay, well, that sounds like a wonderful uh, and enjoyable event. It's a great day for the family. Great. Folks, you can show up and you can also learn about that. Uh, training program that they have and uh, learn more about uh, living smart, eh? Absolutely. All right, Don. Thanks so much for talking to Thank me. Thank you for having me. I wish you well and thanks for the peaches. And we'll see you out at the market. You can have the box. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave everybody the peaches. Okay, okay. We're going to take a short pause right now and we'll be back with our next guest. <clears throat> so stay tuned for Livewire. And if you hadn't written that down about the Peach Festival, you should because there's some more events coming along right after this important message. Problems. The ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? I'm Matt Martin, and I've had my fair share of bruises and injuries. But for many who put their lives on the line every day, it's not always the injuries you can see that hurt the most. Every single day, 184 veterans are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress. When medications and therapy don't help, 
professionally trained service dogs can. American Humane has created a free guide to help veterans obtain these life-saving animals. For help, please go to AmericanHumane.org. the founder of something called the Beatnik Studios. Been around in Sacramento for quite a while producing events. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Nice so, to be here. Yeah, I, I wondered if they had a founder or just a bunch of Beatniks got together and said, cool man, just snapped their fingers and it happened, right? It was more like that, yeah. I <laughs> know <laughs> it wasn't. So you were walking along and lightning hit you in the head and you said, I must found an art center. Uh, <laughs> well, no, I was at Sac State actually in the photography department. Uh, and I met my business partner there mm -hmm. and uh, we just always dreamed about having a shared studio space mm -hmm. after school so we could continue to stay networked with yes. other photographers and just you know keep the creative inspiration going and have a place to just plug in and uh, so a couple years after school we'd been meeting and talking about it and wanting to do something and uh, my partner her name's Lindsay Kalmetz she uh, she just called me up one day and said hey I signed a lease on a place <laughs> <laughs> That's a partner going yeah. full speed ahead. So get, get it together or, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we signed a lease on a place and we just kind of jumped right in and started experimenting. Really, it was a, just an experiment. Good, good. And obviously it's done well as you've gone along because we, you uh, rented a building uh, and then uh, after a while you decided, wait a minute, this, this should be per more permanent. Yeah, we uh, rented for five years over on uh, 17th and Broadway. Yeah. And uh, during that time, those five years, was a lot of experimentation and refining what we wanted to do. And we always wanted to be a, kind of a creative organization and uh, sort of a social club where, you know, ideas could come to life. Um, and we just didn't know how to keep it going. Um, and then we kind of started doing events um, you know, we always uh, wanted to do shows, concerts, and things like that, and so we started plugging our friends in to play music shows, and the music shows got bigger and bigger, and we said, hey, what, do we, what can we do to make this the backbone and keep these events going? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the consistency of the event business kept, you know, kept us motivated to continue working on the art what gallery. What kind of events? It started out with a lot of underground concerts, uh -huh. um, and then probably about four years into it, we uh, did our first wedding oh, yes. and that was the catalyst. So that was the powder keg. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay at the time was, uh, and still is a wedding photographer. Uh -huh. um, and I was, uh, I had shot weddings and, you know, we were trying to, you know, as young photographers looking to make a living. Um, Doing weddings? Well, yeah. So we started shooting wedding, more and more weddings and we started hosting them in the venue and it just really took off. People were uh, inspired by what we were doing, inspired by the space. Um, it's a very alternative uh, feel to a typical wedding venue. It's yeah. not a typical ve wedding venue. It's, wow. it's a total, yeah. uh, you know, it's a total um, left turn from, I guess, what, what, what a typical wedding like venue would be. Like man. Different. Yeah, totally. So um, then what happened? Uh, well, the weddings were consistent. We wanted to expand the space because we wanted to be able to facilitate more events, larger events. We wanted to have, we had more ambitious uh, art projects we wanted to do. Yes. Um, so we were debating whether to pour money into a space that we were renting or just see what, see if we could purchase a space. So um, we decided Ooh, wait, there's we decided a slide to up shop. There. What is that called? That's a flyer for the upcoming art show, which opens August 4th, this Friday. Uh huh. Um, and it plays through August 24th. Yep, 4th through the 24th, and it's called Condensed. Oh, these are the uh, the people who do murals, but they also do regular art. Absolutely. Yeah, oh. so the Mural Festival is a big, it's a big, uh, it's a big event that's happening in Sacramento. There was a Mural Festival last year. This year it's much larger, more ambitious. Um, there are somewhere around 50 artists participating in the Mural Festival. We were doing a show called Condensed because it's all of the artists that are participating in the mural festival in a gallery setting. Mm -hmm. That last slide was uh, Francesca Gomez, who's a fantastic artist. That was mm -hmm. shot yesterday. She's preparing her wow. piece for the show. Um, this is John Horton. He's a, a, an, another 
amazing artists. These guys, they paint murals, but they're just incredibly talented artists. Yes. And you know, we're showcasing what they can do in a gallery setting. This is Jose de Gregorio. He's a very well-known artist in town. He did um, a fantastic mural in the inside of the uh, warehouse artist lofts. Oh, yeah. um, this is one of my favorite artists. He's a Sacramento gem. His name is Waylon Horner. Oh, God, <laughs> I know. He is incredible. Yeah. Um, just, you know, it's he's a very Sacramento artist. Yeah. Sac Sacramento artists tend to have this, um, you know, they're incredibly talented, but they don't have this preconceived notion or this, like, LA sheen that you get yeah. from so many artists that come out of Southern California. Yeah. yeah. Sacramento bands and artists are, are just, um, they're phenomenal. There's wow. phenomenal work. Who's there? That's that previous one was um, Francesca Gomez again. Uh. And this one here is Molly Devlin. She's a local girl. I've seen uh, her work. She's a spectacular painter. Yeah. yeah. She's got a, a solo show coming up at the 1810 Gallery. Uh huh. This is Miles, um, Miles Toland. And he, when I left today to come over here, he was in the gallery working on his piece, which is phenomenal. And he's painting the mural um, right outside the back of the beatnik. He's painting a massive mural out there. Wow. And this guy is world, world traveled, paints murals all over. He has an ongoing mural project in India that he's involved with. Really? I mean, these guys are substantial artists. They're, you know. Good for them. It's, it's nice a, to know it's about. It's an impressive you know, the arts movement, when I first came here a few years ago, the uh, art, artists, visual artists, were the thing. Yeah. The thing, and I thought, well, I thought theater would be, no. What about dance? No. <laughs> it was visual arts. It was really something, you know, with the, yeah. the TB9 group still kicking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, all the different disciplines, you know, feed each other, and yeah. a stronger art community is good for performance, it's good for visual arts, it's good for all, all kinds of arts. So, um, well, you're going to do the infomercial part right now because we've got to, we got to go off. You've got to beat Nick Studios first Friday opening. Yeah, this Friday, six to nine. There are a lot of events going on the, in the month of August that are um, tied in with the mural festival. Mm -hmm. Okay. So instead of listing them all off, I would just say come over on Friday. Okay, and find out more. Find out more, yeah. <laughs> Wes Davis, thank you so much for coming to talk to me. No about problem. This. Thanks for having me. And you. I wish you well on um, and Beatnik Studios and all everything you do. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Okay. We, yes, we are going to take another pause for the cause, and we'll be back with uh, some folks from California Stage and their um, cabaret called Porch Time. Porch. I was going to say Porch Song, but that's wrong. Porch Time. Right after this important message, or two or three. I tell people I have three kids, one of them's adopted, I just don't know which one. I can't imagine having to be in a birth mother's position to make that choice. You know, I was kind of just asking her, you know, what is your motivation, why are you doing this? And she looked at me and she said, because you can give my son a life that, that I could not. We always tell her thank you. He is such a blessing to us. Every day is just a ray of sunshine from him. So. We're Chanda and Brian, and we chose adoption. Nearly half of children with autism wander away from safe places such as their home or school. If you ever see a child walking alone, remember the three S's. Stop to help, seek assistance from police, stay until they arrive. If a child with autism is missing, immediately search places that pose the most danger, such as nearby water and busy streets. To learn more, visit missingkids.com aware. So, Marjorie. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. Good, good, good. And me again? <laughs> Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. You two kind of went to school. This is, this is a um, artist <laughs> meeting again after a number of years. 25 kind of years. Thing. You know, I find <laughs> it's fascinating. I know. Uh, the idea of, uh, you know, meeting uh, old artists. I met with an artist uh, that I had worked with in high school. 
about maybe 10 years ago, and she said, well, let's do a play together. Mm -hmm. And we did. It was great fun. It was really nice touching bases. And so this is kind of that. Kind of, yeah. We were in... We both went to Sac High, mm -hmm. and we were members of the show choir Star Makers mm -hmm. for three so was my years wife, together. Only much earlier. Earlier, ah. <laughs> yeah, and we were uh, kind of a big deal. <laughs> kind of, yes. Yeah. So it was. We were very important, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and we lost touch after high school. And mm -hmm. I, she's been back in Sacramento for what four years. Uh, actually, this is my first real year. Oh my I've goodness. I've always come back to it and spent at least six months here and then took off again and then six months and then took off again. But this is my first year settled in Sacramento. Wow. In yeah. many years. And this is my first time back um, for a while. I go you back and forth. You New York. Yeah. A I big live city there with the... Yeah. Full time in New York, but I'm back here off and on right now. Uh -huh. And so turns out we're living a few blocks from each other and... Um, after she puts her little girl to bed, I go over to her house and we pull out a bottle of wine and have porch time where we chat till very late. And we thought, this could be the makings of a good show. And so we're, yeah. we decided to put a show together and talk about our past and our hopes and our, our hopes for the future and everything mm -hmm. and sing some songs about it and sing some duets and yeah performing arts was such a big part of our development as teenagers what we didn't know about each other was that we were both miserable in high school I see. <laughs> so coming together 25 years later she was like you were and I'm like yeah I was just a very good actress I had everybody fooled and uh -huh. the truth was I never wanted to be there but thank God for the theater department and our, you know, our and fabulous singing. choir. But no, high school was horrible. And had it not been for the arts, I, I probably never would have graduated. And both of us then proceeded to go into the arts. Yes. In the future, or we're as adults, and we're both uh, professionals. Yep. In the arts. I've performed in uh, Mexico, Japan, Israel, Europe, New York, L.A., Boston, Chicago, Seattle, L.A., San yeah. Francisco, sold just, out. Just a few places. Just a, a few, few places. Just a few. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And you, young lady, you kind of run a, a cabaret or not a, cabaret, a, salon. a salon. Yeah, in New York. Well, what I, is a salon, by the way? A salon. Not a, a salon. Not a hair salon. Um, kind of like a hair salon, though. People get together and they exchange ideas, which is, I think, probably where the idea for the name salon comes from for hair. Oh. But um, I totally just made that up. That's a good but, I like it. But it makes like sense, it. right? It kind of so, does. Yes. Um, but. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, 18th and 19th centuries in Paris, it was very popular to have these salons where artists and intellectuals would get together and they'd s swap ideas and share their art. It's sort of the pre-cabaret mm -hmm. um, thing that they would do, but they do it in rooms, in, um, in the salon mm -hmm. room of a house, yeah, exactly. and everybody would sit there. And like and your previous guest said, Wes, I mean, all of the different forms really feed each other. You know, yeah. the singers feed the painters and the painters feed the photographers and la 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 la. And Absolutely. artists that are stuck on one art can be really boring. <laughs> and when you, the, the more you're exposed to different ideas and to different kinds of people and to different experiences and to different forms of expression, the richer your experience becomes and the richer your art becomes and the more em empathetic of a person you become. And um, when people get to talk about it and share it, it, it can blossom into something amazing. Depth. Wow. So. Depth. So Depth. I knew a woman that painted <laughs> only steam irons for a whole year and I told her, you know, you could change, maybe you should paint ironing boards. <laughs> <laughs> Steam irons. Well, I suppose each of them are unique. Oh, they are all different. That's right. She did find diversity in steam, steam irons. irons. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I like singing <laughs> sad songs very much, uh -huh. but I find that all of them are very different, even though, you know, in, it, in the core, they're the same story. I see. Okay, and so yeah. you, you put together this cabaret, mm -hmm. and yes. you're going to perform it at uh, California Stage when? Sunday, 5 o'clock. Well, this Sunday, this 5 o'clock. Yes. Oh, and, and you're here because you want people to come. Please. Exactly. Calstage.org. We, oh, there we it California is. Porch time. Cal Cal Stage. One night only. One night only. Yes. We promise. 5 p.m. Oh, it's 5 p.m. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah, early yeah. enough that people can still get their week together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I like that. It sounds like fun. So, um, <clears throat> could you guys uh, maybe sing a song, or one of you sing a song that you're going to do? Well, sure. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we had slides for the uh, Peach Fair. I well, know. sure. Well, this is a song um, from a musical called Chess. It was the song that we did in show choir all the time, so we thought we'd do it together again. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds pretty good. Okay, wait, we ought, can I do the introduction? Oh, of course, please. Okay. <clears throat> please. All right, we'll do it just like we do it on radio, okay? <laughs> and now here's Marjorie Bailey and Megan Cooper. Nothing, no one in your life is with you constantly. Perfect situations must go wrong, but this has never yet prevented me from wanting far too much for far too long. Looking back, I could, I have, could played have played things some other way. One of few more moments, who can tell? I was just a little but careless. I was ever so much Maybe now at least now I know least him I know well. I know him well. Wasn't it good? Oh, so good. Wasn't he fine? Oh, so fine. Is that his madness? He, he won't be mine. mine. Didn't I know? Didn't I know how, how it would go if I knew from the start? Why am I falling apart? Wasn't it good? Oh, so good. Wasn't he fine? Oh, so fine? Isn't it madness? He, he won't be mine. But in the end, he needs a little bit more than me. More security. He needs his fantasy and freedom. I know him so well. It was just a little careless. I know him so well. Acapella is hard. <laughs> oh, it is hard, but you did we really are well. <laughs> okay, there they are, and we want to say thank you too for coming to do that. Oh, thank you for special. having us. And we'll see you Sunday night at yeah. 5 p.m. at California night. Stage. Yes, yes. calstage.org. Okay. okay, let's wave goodbye because we got to go. Bye. Oh, bye. 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 Roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> That's what roll. they do. Come on, roll, roll credits. Credit. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can't believe she slept through the whole